Mercedes-Benz GLS 450. The 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLS class elevates family hauling to new heights in terms of practicality, but it still leaves room for improvement. Versus the competition, less bulky than the full-size SUVs from Cadillac and Infiniti, the GLS class delivers unexpected utility, but drivability falters in this year's refresh. Don't let the new name fool you. The GLS class is a mild update, not a full redesign, of the second-generation GL class that began with the 2013 model year. The name is simply a result of Mercedes nomenclature overhaul. Compare the two SUVs here. The GLS class comes with the V6, GLS 450, or V8, GLS 550, engine, both turbocharged. There's also a GLS 350D with a turbo diesel V6, but, as of this writing, it's awaiting EPA clearance amid heightened scrutiny over all things diesel. All-wheel drive and seating for 7 are standard, you can compare trim levels here. Exterior and Styling in a nutshell, the GLS class is a GL class with new headlights and grille inserts. Mercedes revised a handful of other areas, too, the bumper openings, some lower cladding and, just barely, the taillights, but those changes are even slighter. This is hardly an overhaul, and given the GL class crowd-pleasing styling, it didn't need to be. The GLS 550 has a meaner, Funker down look with gaping bumper openings, but its near $95,000 starting price is also a lot meaner on your wallet. How it drives. Editors disagreed on the power from our GLS 450 turbocharged V6, some found it quick, or at least quick enough, but I deemed it only adequate. Most of the engine's reserves were needed merely to pass slower traffic. At higher speeds, the 9-speed automatic transmission resists downshifts until your right foot is halfway to the floor. One editor found accelerator response immediate, but I observed outright lag off the line. At least I found it consistent, so drivers can plan for it, and there's a sport mode that quickens transmission response. But those are silver linings on a sluggish cloud. Interior The GLS gets high marks for practicality but it's hit and miss on the luxury front. Visibility is excellent thanks to tall windows and head restraints that nest into the seats in the second and third rows to clear up the view out back. The second row is a three-position bench, you can't get separate captain's chairs, that reclines but doesn't slide forward and back. Our test car's optional power tumbling chairs made third row access a cinch, one button nests the head restraint, tumbles the seat and even powers the front chairs forward if there isn't enough clearance. Both the second and third rows have adult friendly space. The third row treats passengers to a high seating position, big windows and padded armrests. Many second rows don't have it this good. Ergonomics and Electronics Fitted with optional Apple CarPlay, Android Auto isn't available, the GLS class sorely needs a touchscreen. No tapping, pinching or swiping the optional 8-inch dash display, all the action with that screen happens through a rotary knob and touchpad on the center console, and it's terrible. You can press down on the console touchpad to make a selection, but you can't zoom or scroll around CarPlay's Apple-sourced navigation system or even change menu selections. Doing any of that requires you to spin the knob to move the screen cursor to different selections and pick something. It's time to move on from this, Mercedes, especially now that you're attempting to support the touchscreen-oriented CarPlay. Cargo and Storage The GLS class has a competitive 16 cubic feet of cargo space behind the third row. It's a cinch to fold, with standard power folding. 50-50 split back rests that go completely down and up with one-touch controls, a significant advantage over most power folders, which require you to hold the button while the seats slowly do their thing. With the third row folded, cargo space behind the second row is 49.4 cubic feet. Safety The GLS class has not been crash tested. A backup camera and drowsy driver detection system are standard as is a forward collision warning system with automatic emergency braking. Blind spot and lane departure warning systems are optional. 
Self-driving options include adaptive cruise control with lane centering steering assist, which purports to keep your car centered, not just pinballing between lane markers, given the right conditions.